The Limit Comparison Test for Integrals, or LCTI, says, if the positive functions f of x and g of x are continuous on the interval from a to infinity, and if the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x over g of x is equal to some number l that is positive and finite, then the integral from a to infinity of f of x dx and the integral from a to infinity of g of x dx both converge or both diverge. If the limit is zero or infinity, then the test is inconclusive. Why does this make sense? The convergence is really only dependent on the tail of the integral. That is, the convergence is dictated by what happens at infinity. If for sufficiently large values of x, f of x is approximately equal to l times g of x, and one of the two integrals converges, then the other one should also converge, since it is only off by about a scalar multiple. The same goes for diverging. If one diverges, then multiplying it by a positive number won't suddenly make it converge, so the other one should also diverge. Let's go ahead and look at an example. Example 8 says, show that the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx converges using the limit comparison test for integrals. Really quickly before we get started, we should actually expect that this integral will converge because in an earlier example, we evaluated the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of this thing, and we found that this was equal to pi. So if we graph 1 over 1 plus x squared from negative infinity to positive infinity, if we take the area underneath that curve, we found that the area underneath the curve was pi. So if we are now taking basically the same integral, but now we're integrating from 1 to infinity, then if the area from negative infinity to positive infinity was a finite number, if we make the interval smaller, that should also be a finite number that's smaller than pi. So that's just a quick tip to help us with this, but let's go ahead and use the limit comparison test now. So what we want to do here is let's define f of x to be the function that we're looking at, which is 1 over 1 plus x squared. And our goal is to try and find a function g of x such that when we take the limit, it's equal to something that is a positive finite number so that we can make a determination about whether this thing is going to converge or diverge. Now, I'm going to choose my function of g of x to be 1 over x squared. And just as a side note, I know that this thing converges from the p-test. So that's going to help us out. Let's now go ahead and take the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x over g of x, which is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over 1 plus x squared. This is our f function. And then we're going to divide by 1 over x squared, which is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So that's equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of x squared over 1 plus x squared. Now what I can do is I can multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 1 over x squared over 1 over x squared. So essentially we're dividing every term by x squared. Okay, and so as x approaches infinity, this fraction here is going to approach 0. So we get 1 over 0 plus 1, which is equal to 1. So we did the work to show that this limit is equal to 1, which is a positive finite number. And we know that the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared dx converges by the p-test. because p is greater than 1. Therefore, 
by the limit comparison test for integrals. The integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over 1 plus x squared dx must also converge. And there we've shown or proven that this integral converges by using the limit comparison test for integrals. Example 9 says show that the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 minus e to the negative x all over x dx diverges using the limit comparison test for integrals. So let's go ahead and define f of x in this scenario to be 1 minus e to the negative x over x. And for g of x, I'm going to choose my function to be 1 over x. And I know that this diverges by the p-test. So let's go ahead and take our limit now. We have the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 minus, actually, let's first write it as f of x over g of x. So f of x over g of x, which is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 minus e to the negative x over x. And then I'm going to go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal of g of x. So what's going to happen is these x's will divide out, and we'll be left with the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 minus e to the negative x, which I'm going to rewrite that as 1 over e to the x. And what happens is this fraction, as x goes to infinity, that goes off to 0. So finally, our limit will equal 1, which is a positive finite number. So since our limit was a positive finite number, that means by the limit comparison test for integrals, both of these integrals much, must converge or must diverge. But we already know that this diverges from the p-test. So we know that the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx diverges by the p-test because p is equal to 1. Therefore, by the limit comparison test for integrals, the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 minus e to the negative x over x dx must also diverge. And now I'm going to go ahead and make my little proof symbol, and that indicates that we are done with this question.